Good morning, mathematician. It's Tuesday of week five, and we are starting out with some fractions. This says George washing machine fills his washing machine with one six socks. One six of the washing machine is filled with socks. He fills another one third with t shirts. How full is the washing machine now? So let's take a look at our numbers. Here I see one sixth, here I see one third. I have to decide what the operation is that I should do with these fractions. And indeed, I find that I should add them. So I'm gonna take the one sixth that it is full of socks and the one third that it is full of t-shirts and add those together. But I know that I can't add these quantities when their denominators are not the same. So I notice that six is a good denominator because I can very easily change this to be an equivalent fraction with a denominator of six. And I can do that by multiplying the three times two, and then the numerator has to follow suit and be multiplied by the same number. So now I'm gonna have one six, and I'm gonna add that to three times two, gives us the six I need on the bottom, and two times one equals two. This and this are equivalent fractions. But take a look, now I have fractions with the same denominator. So my denominator can simply be carried over by six in the denominator of my answer. And let's apply the operations at the top. One plus two gives us three. So my answer here is three, six. And if you would like to simplify that, we know that three, six is the same thing as one half. Those are equivalent values. Now we're going to take a look at volume, really for the next three questions. This and question four are unique in that they are irregular prisms. Prisms that are regular are like this. They have a common height, a common length, and a common width throughout the entire shape, right? This does not have that. This is like an L. I'm sure this is an L for Lehman, my last name, um, but certainly we can turn this into two different prisms in order, to, uh, in order to find the volume and then add those back together. We could divide it this way. I'm gonna go ahead and do kind of a horizontal splice right there, and I'm gonna make this my prism A and my prism B. We know what to do. Let's calculate the volume of A, the volume of B, and then let's add those together. So I'm going to take a look here, and I'm going to say that this entire length is 10 centimeters, but I have to figure out how much of that height is here in A and how much of that height is here in B. Well, I can see that over here, I have a length of three centimeters at this uh, parallel side, three centimeters. So I know that if this accounts for three of those centimeters, this has to account for the other seven centimeters because in all that gives me 10 centimeters that that side is. That is the information that I need to calculate the volume of A. I know that volume equals length times width times height, and I now know that the height here is seven for prism A. The length is this little edge right here, and take a look over here at a parallel side, uh, a congruent measure we see two. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that two, and then the width here is the same as the width here, so that is six, okay? Now, if I take a look at this, I can combine this together. I have 12 times seven. If you are not remembering those 12 facts, we do need to make sure that we have those memorized, but when in doubt, come to the side of the scrap work. We know that 12 times seven is 84. So I know that prism A has a volume of 84 centimeters cubed, but that's not my final answer. I'm gonna to have to get now the volume of prism B, and then I'm gonna add this volume to 84 to get my final answer. So let's do the volume of prism B. I have length times width times height, which I can find on the figure. I've already found that the height is three. I know on this measure that the length is eight, and I know that my width is six, okay? So now I'm gonna start multiplying together, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and combine this. I know that eight times six is 48. So now 
I am going to come over to the side and I'm going to do 48 times 3. 8 times 3 is 24. Here's my 4. Carry my 2. 8 times 4 is 12 plus 2 is 14. So I know that I have 48 times 3, which equals 144 centimeters cubed. Now, I have done a lot of work, but none of it is the answer yet. So now I need to take my 144 and my 84, and I have to add that together. Because 84 is the volume of this in cubic centimeters. 144 is the volume of this also in cubic centimeters. Now we need to add those together. Sometimes even with the extra space in these boxes, oops, I wrote a three instead of a four, I still need to kind of come over and use the margin for some scrap work, and that's just fine, or use some lined paper, but never squish your work together because untidy work, of course, is much more prone to little error. Here we have four plus four is eight. Here we have four plus eight is 12. Here's my two, carry my one, and another two. So I'm looking at a partial answer of 228. I'm going to make a full answer by adding the unit, which is centimeters, and the three means cubed. So here's my final answer for this one, 228 centimeters cubed. Great job, boys and girls. We're staying with that. Take a look at all the tiny answers that we have to get to get to this overall final answer. We are looking at volume here. What I notice is that, yes, there's similarities in these in that I can use that volume formula, volume equals length times width times height, but where they're different is this is an irregular prism, right? The strategy here is to partition. Find the volume of this, volume of this, and add them. Here, I have a regular prism. This is a rectangular prism that it is consistent in its measurements, so let's just apply the volume formula one time. Okay. Volume equals the length, which is 8, times the width, which is 2, times the height, which is 7. So now I can combine two of these. I'm going to combine the 8 and the 2 first to be 16. And now I need to find out what 16 times 7 equals. 6 times 7 is 42. Here's my 2. Carry my 4. 7 times 1 is 7. Plus 3 is 11. So I have found that the volume equals 112. Well, it's 112 what? 112 centimeters cubed. When I take a look at my answer line, they have already written that uh, centimeters cubed for me. So I'm simply going to write that answer of 112. To further solidify volume into our math toolbox, we have got another volume question to answer. Is this a regular or an irregular prism? Certainly we can see it is irregular. When I look at this, it almost looks like a podium at the Olympics, doesn't it? Now it can be broken into prisms. The easiest way to do this is to break it into two prisms. And yes, I'm gonna make the top step in my podium be prism B or prism A and the bottom step be prism B. I'm gonna use the same strategy. Let's go ahead and find the volume that is specific to prism A. I love to tell you students that if you're going to use a formula, you got to state it first. So volume equals length times width times height. And let's go ahead and let's now exchange those variables. The length is right here. Huh, how am I to find the length measure? Well, look, I see an opposite parallel side is, all, is three feet. So I know that this is three feet as well. What is the width going to be? Well, the width is right here. It's not labeled. So look to a parallel side, and I see that this one is three feet. And what is the height measure? Well, that one is labeled for us, and that is two. So volume equals three times three, which is nine. Nine times two, which is 18. So I see that my top prism is 18 feet cubed. Now, Let's find the volume of prism B. Volume still equals length times width times height. So now let's exchange those dimensions. The length of prism B is 5. The width of prism B is 3, just like the prism above it. And the height of this prism is 2. So it does have some similarities in dimensions. And now I'm ready to solve. I know that 3 times 5 is 15. 
And I know that 15 times 2 is 30. So I'm looking at 30 what? Well, it's going to be 30 feet cubed. Notice, after all of this work, I'm still not to my answer. I have an 18 here and a 30 here. This needs to be combined together with addition. And I'm going to write my final answer here. I know that 18 plus 30 is 48. And they have already listed for us that that is cubic feet. Lots of volume that we just considered. So now a little break from volume as we think about Jelly Clarkson. Jelly Clarkson wanted to buy six packs of Jello. She accidentally bought six crates, each crate having 3,174 packs of jelly. Oh my. How many total packs does she have now? Man, this sounds like something that might happen accidentally on Amazon, right? Or maybe when a child just has their uh, parent's phone and accidentally orders tons of dum-dums. Well, in this case, it's tons of jelly. Okay. Now, notice there's actually three numbers that are here in our problem. Does that mean that all three of those are going to be multiplied together? No. Notice. Sometimes we re-say things in problems, and certainly that's what we see here. Kelly, or Jelly Clarkson, wanted to buy six packs of Jello, but she accidentally bought six crates, each with. Notice this six, really, we could have exchanged it with like a pronoun. She accidentally bought that many crates, right? Because we've already said the six. So the six is a little bit redundant, does not mean that we have to multiply by an additional six. I like to point that out because boys and girls, good mathematicians are also good readers. So truly those bills go together. This is multiplication. So let's get ourselves started. Six times four is 24. Here's my four, carry my two. Six times seven is 42, plus two is 44. Here's a four, carry my four. Six times one is six, plus four is 10. So here's a zero, carry one. Six times three is 18 plus one is 19. My, oh my, that's a lot of jelly. So how many total packs does she have now? She has 19,044. What are they? They're packs. So I'm gonna go ahead and re-say that because if my answer has words in context, then I want my number to also have words in context to tie back to that. And again, to make sure that we're thinking through that problem. Boys and girls, that was a lot of thinking today on this Tuesday column. Lots of volume to consider. But that is the end 